ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. I am the Foz, and today we're gonna talk about something somewhat controversial. That's right, the great discussion on divine offering. Now, interestingly, this isn't the first video I've done about this topic. The very first one I did was way back, way back, and we've gone a long way since. Now, this video has been kind of inspired by two things. Well, one was Jodo's tread on why do we miss Dio, why can Dio miss, and another one on should it be changed. And this got me thinking that this, this turned out to be a much more divided topic than I thought, because to me it's, it was a pretty straightforward answer. But there were many other opinions, and actually in the poll that was made in the in the thread, which is in the description, both of the uh, threads are in the description, more people voted for do not change divine offering than than they said to change it which which really got me interesting it got me interested in this topic and that should it be changed now i'm going to start by saying that i do believe it should be changed i am a firm believer of reducing rng in games i'm not totally opposed to it i understand that some level of rng can be interesting but i at the same time cannot support any system which can cause me to lose a game for no reason other than bad luck. Oh well. Anyways, let's get started. And first, we're going to talk about the, the mechanic itself. Because Divine Offering is much more than just mana fixing. It is much more than that. Because yes, you can use it to search for shrines to make sure you don't run out of them. But it does other things. For one, it makes cards that search other cards better because if you're ever in a position where you are holding a card that can search out another card say contraptionist could search out a metabolic overcharger you could just take the overcharger if you drew it send it back to your deck and then you could you always have the target so you never have to worry about drawing the searcher and the target at the same time because you can always send the target back to your deck and always have it available now that's not really a big deal right now because there's not much searching going on in the game contraptionist doesn't see any play at all because well it kind of sucks ass and the only other card would be the um call of jalaya and that's also not a big deal because all that searches out is just nature two drops and especially since Faye is now three it's no one really cares that you can search out you know, you can, you can guarantee a target, since most of your deck probably is targets for that card. But in the future, this is a consideration. I don't know how much searching I'm going to have in the future, but it's something. Not only that, Divine Offering also gives you the chance to cycle out cards you don't want. If you, draw, if you open with a bad hand, as long as you have some shrines and maybe a one drop or something, you can just start cycling out the expensive cards that you can't play for a while and just replace them with shrines and there you go so it helps in that way and this is also one of the reasons that it's used so much because guess what guys we aren't just using divine offering to mana fix we are using it to keep our hands consistent and i think this is a good thing because it allows you to keep more kinds of hands and be able to play more kinds of hands you can draw an expensive loaded hand because you can just start sending the cards back one by one so that's good. Now the last interaction, and this is actually the main reason why it should be changed, at least in at least for that, is that it prevents you from losing the game by milling yourself. Because you can, once your deck has no more shrines, if you divine offer, you will always fail. So you draw the card, you divine offer, and you don't get a shrine. So you just cycle, cycle the same card over and over again, and you essentially stop drawing. And this can lead to games where nobody can win. Because nobody has enough creatures left to make an impact. And it's a big stalemate that has to end when somebody runs out of time. I've had games like that. And it's really, really stupid. And I've conceded these games rather than wait 10 minutes for my opponent to lose. Or 9 minutes for my, myself to lose. So, yeah. That, that shit has to go. No doubt about it. So, anyways... After reading through these threads, people have had some wild ideas for how to fix it. So, I'm going to go over some of these. And the first one, and this one might be the most obvious or the most straightforward. Why don't we just look at more cards, right? 
They increased it from four to five. Why don't we look at six or seven? Well, we could, and it would help, but it would not solve the problem. It actually wouldn't really do anything other than improve your odds slightly. What happened when we went from looking at four cards to looking at five cards is that we just started running less shrines because you could more consistently find a shrine when you divine offer. And the ideal number of shrines in your deck is however many shrines will let you get exactly one shrine every single turn. That's it. So if that number is 20, then it's 20. If it's 18, whatever it is. Now, I'll admit, I do think we run a little bit low, lower on the shrines than we should. But the bottom, the bottom line is this. The further you can look into your deck, the less shrines you will run. Now, is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? There are some issues with that. Number one, skill shrines would become insane because you could just find them very easily. If you could look at the top 10 cards, you could find a skill shrine within five turns. So you could just run one skill shrine, one copy of it in your deck, and that's it. And you'll always find it very quickly. Not only that, it gets to the point where the shrine count starts going down really, really low. And eventually, you just realize that this isn't really solving anything. And if you start looking at too many cards, it starts to feel like, why do we even have Divine Offering at all? So, increasing cards to look at isn't going to solve the problem at all. It's just going to make it less annoying. But we're just going to cut the number of shrines and we're going to be exactly where we started. So the other solution, and really what uh, Johto's post was about, is why don't we just guarantee it? Just never misses. You look for a shrine, you always find the shrine. What's the problem with that? Well, the problem with that, well, at least that's the opinion on the, on the threads. People are worried that this will make the resource system just completely redundant. If you're guaranteed a shrine, and then you always go up mana or aspect, then why do we even have these shrines? And this would actually result in decks having even less shrines. Really, you could just run deck with like 10 shrines and you'd be fine. Now, again, I'm not opposed to that, personally. But I understand the concern. Now, to kind of compensate for that, Ashorn suggested that with that change... You would limit the number of, like, you would set a minimum number of shrines in your deck. So you couldn't do this shenanigan. So let's say 16 or 18 or whatever. And then I believe Joto said, you know, maximum of, minimum of 16 shrines or 18. Look at the top two shrines in your deck and then just pick one, right? And this way you don't get to see the other cards that went to the bottom of your deck. So this actually answers another concern is that sometimes you could kind of keep track of what went to the bottom. I personally never cared about that, but hey, there is that. So that's what the idea is. You would look at the top two shrines, whatever they are, pick one, there you go, guaranteed divine offering, and you just make sure the minimum number doesn't go below like 16 or 18 or whatever it is. Seems to work. I would be on board with this because, again, I'm a chess player. You know what that means? That means I don't do RNG. <laughs> I play chess because there is no RNG. So, this is why I'm especially sensitive to this stuff. But anyways, getting off topic. There are some other solutions. And, and this one is the one I support. Is that you don't lose a card when you, when, you, when you fail. So, rather than not failing, the, the penalty would be smaller. So, there, actually, there were actually these ideas floating around earlier... Well, you know, some time ago, that suggests that if you fail the divine offer, you would be given like a blank shrine, like like just like conjure one from nowhere, and this shrine could be used to add mana without the card draw, or yeah, I think just mana. You couldn't use it for aspect, or maybe you could. Whatever. The point is, you would basically mitigate the penalty. You would still lose a card, but you wouldn't lose the mana. I guess it's all right. Now. Here is what I think would be the, the, the fairest solution. Because let's be honest, all these other ideas... And by the way, there, somebody suggested that we could have like a separate deck for shrines. So you'd have like a 20-card shrine deck and a 40-card regular deck. That crap is never going to happen. 
I can guarantee you that the developers are not going to mess with their shrine system to this degree. No fucking chance. So, since we know some change will have to happen, at the very least, to fix that anti-milling shenanigans, what I would propose is the following. When you Divine Offer and you miss, then you either get your card back that you send back, or better yet, so that you can maintain the idea of cycling, you just draw a card to replace the one you lost. Now, you might say, well, this doesn't change the fact that you lose a mana. Honestly, the whole losing a mana is slightly our fault for running too few shrines. Yes, we have become too greedy about this. I do think at this point, you know, some decks have run like 18 shrines. I think 18 is too low. I stick to 20, unless it's the dragon deck, because that deck doesn't mind missing Divine Offering. I stick to 20. Because I'm okay being slightly flooded with shrines, then slightly screwed. Because there is no such thing as slightly screwed. You're either screwed and you can't play a mana for the turn, or you're not. If you have a little bit too much mana in your hand, that's okay. You'll just cycle it out sooner or later. So I tend to play more shrines. And I think if you do that, if you played like 21 shrines, 20 shrines, and you didn't lose a card... As long as you managed your mana properly, you probably would Divine Offer every turn. You would never have to worry about missing Divine Offering. Because ideally, here's what happens. You're in a situation where you just played a mana for the turn, and now you have no mana in your hand. You Divine Offer then and there. Because if it misses, you've already played your mana, so it's not as punishing. Now, you still lose a card, and that sucks ass. And that's why I want to implement this change, because losing the card is also annoying. Especially when it happens multiple times in a game, like on turn two and three, as happened to me today, and oh my god, that was so painful. Anyways, you do it anyways, to get that shrine ahead of time. And let's say you hit and you have a shrine, next turn you draw a card, you will do the same thing. You can stay ahead of the shrines, as long as you kind of keep a little bit of a, a, little bit of a buffer. You know, you always look for one more shrine than you need. To make sure that if you miss, you can st you still get another chance. Because missing twice is with a decent shrine count is super unlikely. It's going to happen like 1 out of 100 games or something. I guess if you lose 1 out of 100 games to some bullshit like that, I guess th the world isn't going to end, right? But it's when you lose like 10 out of 100 games that it becomes a problem. So that's my solution. You Divine Offer... And you lose, or you, you miss it, you redraw the card. Now, to make it fair, you could even add a cooldown. Like, you can add, like, a two-turn cooldown. So you can't use it every single turn. I honestly don't care. I don't have a problem with using Divine Offering every turn. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a big deal. You might say we're abusing it, but I've come to look at Divine Offering as just a standard mechanic of the game. And I've been seeing more of these mechanics in other games. For instance, the game Duelist allows you to mulligan one card every single turn. You just take a card, shuffle it back, and then you draw a new card. You can do it once every turn. And you know what? Players use it all the time. Unless they have exactly the cards they want. They'll always just mulligan a card because, you know, if you have a card you don't need, you might draw a better card. So that's how I look at Divine Offering. You just use it every turn because there's so much to this mechanic. It Used by a skilled player... It can help you with your consistency in more than one ways. It can help you support more floater cards. You know, cards that answer only a specific thing that you don't really want to run four of. But you might run two of. And if you realize you don't need them, just send them back. You don't feel so bad about running them. Say like a unicorn, right? Or a gnome power engineer. If you know you're up against spells and artifacts, you'll keep them. But if not, send them back. No problem. And this would allow decks to be more diverse. And I like that. Allow decks to have a shot against any other deck. Not crush them, not destroy them, but have a shot at them. See, this is what always, what's always bothered me in these card games, that you have good matchup against X and bad matchup against Y. And Y... Okay, I should, have, should not have used the letter Y. Why is that? Why does that have to be the case? If I was able to design my decks in such a way that I can answer... You know, I can 
reasonably answer whatever I come across, that's what I want. I'm not going to crush anyone necessarily, but no matter what I come up against, I have ways to deal with whatever they throw at me. And this would also force decks to kind of rely on more than just their main win condition, have some backup. And this is why I've fallen in love with the casual Darius, because you can tweak that bad boy into whatever you want. By the way, if you're wondering what the hell casual there is, link it, link for that deck deck is in the description as well. So yeah, that was a long ramble about Divine Offering. I'm not at all surprised that it's like six pages long now in responses, and it will continue to grow because it, it it's a big deal. It's a big part of our game, and I have no doubt that it will be changed in some way, but I'm not expecting miracles. I just don't want to be punished for using it. Now, there is one one last thing I want to mention. This is a po post by uh, Hyperdrift. And he put it in... as it, It's currently the last post. But I'm sure there will be more by the time this video comes out. And he mentions that... The idea of having this RNG that allows like beginners to beat pros is actually a good thing. Because it keeps those players wanting to play. If you have a game that is very skill intensive, that creates a situation where... Hang on, I'm just going to read it to you. It, he, he, he writes the following. Reduced variance leads to upper tiers of play becoming more technical. That's true. And less newcomers sticking around. And it leads to games being dead faster. Interesting point. I'm not saying I agree with it, but it's a very interesting point. And then he quotes another gentleman that wrote something similar regarding Scrabble and poker. It means that players who are willing to spend the time and effort moving from good enough to excellent and who learn the com to combat the randomness will have an edge against people who are unable or unwilling to do so, but they are not guaranteed a victory. And I think this is where... The, the, the whole point of the debate is where a skilled player might look at this and think, well, I should never lose to someone worse than me if, I, if I'm playing correctly, right? You'd think, makes sense. It, it should be a battle of skill. Why should I accept a random element like these disconnects that might cause me to lose the game? I don't want to lose the game. And I, I've been there. I felt the pain. Where you feel like a game is taken away from you. Now maybe maybe there's a point. Maybe a game needs to have this level of randomness. Where new players feel like they can beat pros. If they get really 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 lucky. I can understand that. But honestly I don't think Divine Offering. Is where this randomness should come from. Because there's nothing exciting about it. You, you, just, you just often like skip a turn. You don't go up in mana. Your, your game just becomes crap. And there's not much fun in that. It's not like it's not the same thing as top decking something ridiculous or just you know your opponent randomly having some card that screws you over in a hilarious way. I'm cool with that. That's great. But rolling the dice and the door dice landing on fuck you. Not that much fun. And yeah, the new player might feel like they beat someone because you don't really see the effects so much, but I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bit too biased since I've played this game like thousands of times. And to me, to me, plays that are obvious might not be so for a lot of other players. So to me, these plays seem simple, but maybe, maybe they're not. Maybe I'm starting to talk out of my ass. But anyways, I wanted to end with that little quote because I do think it's, it's fascinating. But for the purposes of the game, I don't think Divine Offering needs to offer you a chance to get screwed. I consider it just as important part of the game as anything. Another tool to be used by players, another tool to be mastered by new players who should learn to use it. Now I'm sure all of this will be alleviated to some to some extent once we have better tutorials because let's face it, the tutorials in Spellweaver are just terrible. They they don't even begin to scratch the surface of the possibilities that are in this game. And, he, and something as simple as Divine Offering can serve so many purposes in your deck, can do so many things for you. And that's why I support using it every turn. Because it's not just a little tool to fix mana, mana screw. It's an integral part of the game and an element that makes it exciting. 
for me and hopefully for other players once they get a little bit better. So, I'm looking forward to see what comes of it. I won't be terribly sad if this doesn't get changed. I'll just learn to live with it. I just would like to. I would like Divine Offering to no longer be a bad thing. Or at least a controllable bad. If you drew a card, if you failed it, or you just got your old card back, that'd be okay. There'd be basically no downside, because as long as you're not too greedy with shrines, which we are, there'd be no problem. So, anyways, this was a long-ass discussion, and I should probably shut the hell up right about now, because you're probably you're probably starting to wonder, when is this guy gonna stop talking? That's what I'm, that's what I'm wondering right now. Anyways, if you want to read more about this, check out the, the links to the posts. One of them is really long, one of them is just started. You can go ahead and vote in the poll as well. And it's definitely worth a read, because there's a lot of interesting opinions that made me realize this is there's a lot more to this than I thought, and there's a lot of intelligent people thinking about this. Certainly our developers, so... Thank you for sticking around, if you stuck around this long. Have a nice day, and I'll see you guys next time.